We are living in an age of conspiracy. From UFO footage to Bigfoot to the intelligence community bugging our food to listen in on our conversations, there are conspiracy theories about a wide variety of topics. I will say I do appreciate the diversity presented in conspiracy theories. You know, the, and the most famous of these conspiracy theories that has gained quite a bit of traction is QAnon. If you're unfamiliar with Q, it's not just an ultra-powerful being from the Star Trek series. Okay, go ahead and take a minute, contact your nerd friends to find out why that joke was so funny. And if you are that nerd friend, uh, welcome. You're at the right podcast. Thank you for hanging out with us. Now, QAnon originates in the depths of 4chan, a shitposting site, and eventually moved to other sites like 8kun. The mysterious Q posts cryptic images and messages on these boards that their followings decipher and then follow dogmatically. Q's followers call these messages Q drops because this is America, and even conspiracy theories deserve a brand and merchandising opportunities. And sometimes these cue drops have led to violent actions. For example, during the Pizzagate conspiracy, which claimed that there was an underground child sex ring run by Hillary Clinton, led to an armed gunman going to Comet Pizza in Washington, D.C. to liberate these kids. But that, of course, was all proved to be false. In a lot of the other posts, they post up cryptic messages about the impending apocalypse and Q's invitation to enjoy the show, like it's a double feature at your local drive-in, which goes against everything we know about apocalyptic thinking. You don't just watch the apocalypse come into fruition, you either make it happen or take actions to prevent it. I don't know if this passive observer model is what the apocalypse is all about. Look, the apocalypse is really about a way of life, not just something you watch from the stands, okay? It requires active participation, especially if you're going to be the mouthpiece for it. QAnon is also responsible for pushing theories about the New World Order, where there's a shadow government run by some of the most powerful people on the planet. Most recently, this conspiracy theory also claimed that this pandemic was a hoax. The phenomenon that Q followers are waiting for is called the Great Awakening, but it's very unclear what that is other than listening to Q like a god speaking through GIFs and memes. GIFs? Is it GIFs or, or GIFs? It doesn't matter. You get the joke. Uh, the fanaticism surrounding QAnon can be seen as a religion or a cult. The unseen leader that sends out the, a, a message for their disciples to uncover. Basically, it's like if Tyler Durden from Fight Club learned about memes. Also, like Tyler Durden, the identity of Q seems to be the allure of Q. Q's followers have theories about who it could be, from Donald Trump himself to JFK, which is like saying the second coming of Jesus could be a cartoon villain or JFK. The followers of Q are infatuated with them, right? These followers usually come from a working class background and have gone through a major life change, like a job loss, reconfiguration of faith, and so on. And when you go through a change like that, the transition point is scary and lonely. So latching onto another community that is offering you something to follow and a sense of order mixed with a higher purpose seems like the right thing to do. Attaching oneself to communities like QAnon comes from the fear of change and a community offering you answers to all of your questions. Now the Q community is generally hated by the establishment and intelligence agencies who are busy trying to get people to believe their conspiracies. You know, a system that kind of encourages competition really hates competing. Now, the biggest issue in the last few years that has been, uh, that's fallen into place is the conspiracy, it, it, within the conspiracy category at least, is the belief that Donald Trump was put into power by sneaky Russians and is doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin. 
this conspiracy theory was pushed forward as a fact by virtually every liberal, Democrat, and related media outlet despite any proof. It was called Russiagate, and it doesn't want to die. Every week for three years, they looked for a smoking gun, but each point was more speculative than the previous one. And even Robert Mueller, the chief investigator for this scandal, debunked the argument. Mueller, in his report, states there were no Kremlin intermediaries. Journalist Aaron Maté has done a fantastic job at debunking these arguments in his reporting and has won awards for it. Yet, squishy liberals call folks like him that do the work and prove ideas true or false as Russian agents or Kremlin mole men. In this reporting, uh, in his in his reporting, Aaron Mate points out that each time someone came forward with information about the Clinton campaign, it was basically a false flag and turned out to be a waste of time. He also points out that Mueller reports uh, that the, the the claims of the interaction with Russian ambassador Sergei Kislyak was brief, public, and non-substantive, which is like the meanest thing you could say to a diplomat. And on and on it goes. Look, I've addressed these points several times over the course of the last few years and even delved into the McCarthyism, which we continue to give into as a society. Democratic leadership has turned routine diplomatic efforts into acts of espionage befitting a James Bond movie. Look, I get it. Politics can be boring because it doesn't have explosions and tits, but come on, this is going a little bit too far, isn't it? Now, the other claim that was made was that the Russian hackers were responsible for hacking into the DNC servers and leaking the emails that led to the downfall of Hillary Clinton. The firm that discovered this evidence was a company called CrowdStrike, which was hired by the DNC. And before the FBI could look at their servers, CrowdStrike and the DNC destroyed the servers. Now, look, if you found the smoking gun, like, especially like they say that they did with this argument, this would be like if you melted the gun, turned on a fan, and then just set the house on fire for good measure. This is what became known as the Steele Dossier, and that's an appropriate name, because much like in Daniel Steele novels, somebody is going to get fucked. But unlike a Daniel Steele novel, it won't be in like a brisk, romantic fashion. The most recent update to the unending saga surrounding Russiagate comes from the president of CrowdStrike, Sean Henry, who, during a congressional hearing, said they don't have concrete evidence that the DNC servers were hacked by Russian state actors or anyone at all, which means that the smoking gun turned out to be a water pistol that did not have any fucking water in it. And when the emails were, were released by WikiLeaks, Julian Assange himself said that the information came within the DNC and not an external source. And since it came from within, it's a leak, not a hack. And because he said that, the DNC labeled him a Russian asset. When asked for proof, they gave everybody the finger and made a loud eagle noise and then ran away. So the question is, why? Why would the Democrats weave a narrative that would be fitting of the Q community while simultaneously saying that if you don't believe this conspiracy, you are QAnon? Part of the problem comes from the fact that the Democratic Party is unwilling to accept its own faults as a party. Over the years, it's moved further and further to the right aligned itself with corporate interests and even dictators like in Saudi Arabia, all for the sake of the almighty dollar. They sold out the working class people, and instead of admitting to it, like the Republicans do, they sell us a bill of goods, tweet a few platitudes, and expect us to fall in line. This can also be seen in how movements like Black Lives Matter and any worker solidarity movements are treated. The narrative that is woven by the intelligence community about these movements 
is that they're destabilizing the American way of life by pointing out the, the radical and uh, a, a large gaping income inequalities in our society. And henceforth, they are helping Russian interests infiltrate the nation. I think what's causing the destabilization of the American way of life is the systemic racism that kills our brothers and sisters in communities of color and the widening income gap to keep the rich richer and the working class too tired and hungry to push back. The CIA making this argument come off as an authoritarian force that claims equality is a conspiratorial crime. They're also alluding to the fact that there might be a foreign actor in charge of these protests. Now, considering the history of the CIA and how many countries they've destabilized, it just sounds like they're paranoid that someone might be out for revenge. So what happens when you push back against these narratives presented by the establishment elites and the intelligence agencies? Well, they associate you with the QAnon community to discredit you. Now, let's be clear. Russiagate was a conspiracy theory weaved by the Democratic establishment, and there is a mountain of evidence to prove it. This statement doesn't acquit Donald Trump of any of the other illegal activities he's engaged in as president. Just that this is a spy movie that's not really a spy movie at all, but really a comedy of errors where nobody understands the joke. This statement also doesn't mean that I'm a Trump supporter or sympathizer, rather that I am someone who looks into facts and evidence and don't give up my critical thinking to serve a party that doesn't have my interests in mind. The Democratic establishment, with the help of the intelligence community, is acting no better than QAnon. Every week, Rachel Maddow, the mouthpiece of Russiagate, would drop little Q clues to the smoking gun, which, as we covered, ends up being false. This is kind of like the Q drops that come, into, come in this cryptic fashion and the followers of Q spend hours deciphering it. There's an obsession of finding out exactly who's behind the Trump election. That one person that made it happen, just like how the followers of Q want to find Q themselves. The liberals and the Democrats couldn't accept that the party they supported all these years could be so corrupt and vapid. So they were led into conspiracy thinking instead of critical thinking. But these Democrats are going through the same issues that the folks that join QAnon are going through. They are entering a phase of their skepticism that makes you ask tough questions about their beliefs and their party affiliation, which could also be connected to their identity. Look, you are still you, and you don't need a big blue D by your name to believe the things you believe. This fear leads them to latch on even harder to the Democratic Party as the party of the good guys with all of the answers. When someone tells you the answer, it's a lot easier than discovering them for yourself. The difference between what is provable and what is a conspiracy theory is the word theory. Is it plausible that there is a new world order somewhere within the depths of Congress? Yeah, maybe, but there's no real evidence proving that. There is real evidence that most of the politicians working in there are, are working to enrich themselves and fund future campaigns in their own mansion with two refrigerators. Is it possible there's a Bigfoot somewhere in the woods of America? Maybe, but we won't really have any evidence suggesting this, and a show on the Learning Channel isn't fucking proof. It is proof that the word learning is applied very loosely in this case. Is it plausible that Russia is trying to infiltrate America? Maybe, but as we just discussed, there is no evidence suggesting it. This idea plays into the notions of the intelligence wars. Every country has an agency or two dedicated to gathering intelligence from other countries secretly so that they can get a leg up if a conflict arises. America has used this force more prominently than other countries. It should be no surprise that it is a possibility that this could happen here. But till there is evidence suggesting that making large claims like Russian assets and interference 
is about as detrimental as saying the coronavirus isn't real. And the vitriol faced by anyone that goes against the word of the democratic establishment is far more severe than the scorn of a Republican. The extrapolation of information is a lost skill for most of the populace. Part of the problem with questioning authority is knowing when to make a decision based on the information that you've gathered, understanding where your bias comes from, and addressing it with honesty isn't really something that's taught to most people that grew up in the school of American exceptionalism. Being open-minded is great, but striking a balance between that and skepticism leads us to clarity and away from the rabbit holes of conspiracy theories. Or at least that's what they want you to believe. Uh, I want to let you guys know that every single Friday in June, I am going to be doing my virtual live stand-up comedy shows, the Citizen Revolution comedy shows, every single Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and you can grab your tickets right now for just five bucks. They're only five bucks, and you can grab your tickets right now uh, from my website, krishmohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O. H A N dot com. That's June 5th, June 12th, June 19th, June 26th, and then moving forward into July every single Friday. And each show is going to be new. It's going to be different. So you can purchase tickets for multiple shows if you would like. If you go to the June 5th ticket link, uh, you can actually grab a discounted tickets uh, for all of the shows in June. We are working on some. Uh, not just some pretty cool material, but uh, going forward into the summer, we'll be we'll be doing some uh, uh, looking into some partnerships for these shows as well. Uh, so once again, you can go grab tickets to the Citizen Revolution comedy shows every single Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific at KrishMohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N dot com. I'm also releasing my brand new uh, live stand-up comedy album that was recorded in uh, St. Louis, Biloxi, Mississippi, and Rochester, New York. It has recordings from uh, those those three cities. Those were amazing, awesome shows, and I th thank you so much to the people from those cities that came out to see the shows. Uh, you can get pre-order that album. The album comes out on June 1st. If you pre-order it right now, you get the copy uh, directly into your inbox. On June 1st, you can go to my Bandcamp, ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. And if you if you don't want to stop there, if you wanna if you wanna go above and beyond because you have the ability to go above and beyond, you can uh, follow me on Bandcamp. That lets you know when I'm coming out with more releases um, on the platform, and uh, and you can become a sustaining member over on Bandcamp as well, uh, which will give you unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. You make a monthly contribution, and every month you get a you get new stand-up comedy and storytelling collections. These are uh, fringe festival sets. They are sets I did for you know small crowds where we're just talking and interacting with the crowd. Uh, these are early versions of shows, new material nights where it's just me riffing on new material and seeing where things go. So you get all of that sort of stuff by becoming a sustaining member over at the band camp. But that's not the only place you can become a sustaining member. You can become a sustaining member on my website at krishmohan.com. You can join uh, the Patreon. You can join uh, and become a sustaining member directly on my website. And the perks of becoming a sustaining member are that you get uh, bonus stand-up comedy content that is unreleased anywhere else. It's only available to the sustaining members. You get free tickets to, to, to live stand-up comedy shows to these virtual live stand-up comedy shows you get early access to my my comedy album you get that for free uh and you get lots and lots and lots of other really cool stuff as well um including posters i'm gonna try to get some some posters out to some folks uh uh that are that are part of the uh the 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 patreon and the sustaining members as well so uh, there is some cool stuff that you can do by becoming a sustaining member. If you can, if you have the ability to, it'd be super rad if you did. Uh, 
those are all of the announcements. Thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. Make sure you subs- are subscribed. Make sure you share this out with some folks. I really appreciate all the people that, that tune into this on a regular basis, that like and share this on a regular basis as well.